Not on hardware time, like yeah. We do a newsletter every single week. Um, I got two things I want to talk to you about. Yes. Um, first up, uh, we have the recap from Circuit Python Day. I know it was a big success. Yeah, and I think um, one of the things that's really hard to do is an event in general, and you probably always need to do like a virtual hybrid now and have the recordings in a place. Um, in person's a, a, a little bit harder now, especially like whatever natural disaster, weather thing, um, sickness, uh, something's going on always. So I, I, I think we we figured out a way to keep Circuit Python Day going while we figure out like what type of in-person thing would we do? Would we bolt onto an event? So check out all of the videos that we have um, from our shows that we did, 3D Hangouts, Heaps and Boops, Game Jam, um, <coughs> excuse me, the Biportal Message Project, um, sorry, Python Day Chat, and um, you can also watch some of the stuff with Scott, some of the really uh, deep innards of Circuit Python. We do have an 8.2.3 release. Um, it's a you know dot update. So uh, if you're really interested in things, there's RGB matrix timing on the Sam X 5X SMDs. And yeah, then... there's we we've, we've been doing a lot of hacking to the matrices uh, are some of the ones that we have in stock now are a little bit that pickier about timing. Yeah, so we just uh, um, going. lots of um, projects. One that I wanted to just mention is I so I saw um, that movie Interstellar. I like the graphics with the especially the black hole. I was like, oh, you know, they're pretty, pretty good. Um, I think it was around that time when we were getting the images of a black hole, like the, fir the first time yeah. it was like it was neat to kind of see that. But the the robot, um, the TARS robot, I thought that was like a really cool idea. This robot companion that it was AI and it's there to help you and stuff. Yeah. Um, and when I saw maybe it was open source, someone had tagged us because they made a they made a bot and they used some made for stuff. Yeah. And that was really neat. So that's in the newsletter. Um, and I think this is a cute robot because it's like it was a very different design. It's this it's this walking robot that has these blocks. It wasn't like a humanoid. It was meant to clearly it's a robot. Yeah. It's not just something that looks like a human, like I am human, you know, I'm data. Data's fine. No, no, not big on data. Um, but for this little segment, I wanted to ask you about merging. The urge to merge. The urge to merge. What's going on when we do a merge and more with Well, one uh, of the big I mean, it's like one of the big projects that we're doing right now is prepping for Circuit Python 9, right? Like we're we're already at like 823. We've been supporting Espressif, you know, very well lately. So time to think about nine. And um one of the things that we like to do is when we do a major release, that's a good time for us to do an upstream merge from MicroPython because we love MicroPython, but they they kind of like to make API changes, especially MPY file changes. And they've got good reason to do it. They're, they're doing this cool like load from file system stuff. Um, but we don't like to have breaking changes unless it's a major version. And so we kind of waited until, you know, we're kind of settled with eight. We're ready to do nine. Nine is going to be USB host, um, as well as maybe yeah. some Bluetooth stuff. We'll see. And um, that's the theme you think for nine USB host? I think USB host is going to be the theme. Yeah, because like we're basically getting getting. Got to work on a new poster. <laughs> yeah, got a new poster. Uh, you need like a little like a hostess. Like, yeah, it could be like. Um, don't put the USB logo in because I think you have to license to. to not going to be no, and like who knows what is the right logo anymore because there's like a billion like USB variants. Anyway, it could be like it could be like the blink a tail with the. You know, it could be blink it serving up. Serve, serving up Maps, the goodness. Keyboards, yeah. MIDI. Uh, so we, we're getting the, that going, but we're also doing this upstream merge from 119 and 120, uh, which just have an MPY change. We also had just a lot of changes, which is good. I mean, we are the biggest or one of the biggest sponsors of MicroPython. Yeah. We I guess we should cash money. I guess we should mention it because, you know, you don't get credit and there's um, people that try to dunk on you. So we give money to, uh, we specifically sponsor MicroPython. Um, and we increase that every single year. Yeah. I think we're the largest one, but someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we also help fundraise every year on the GitHub sponsors. Um, so you can go to the MicroPython uh, GitHub repo and you can see the sponsors. We also did that there because we wanted to show like, hey, like we can do it because organizations could do it. Um, but then they, they're getting closer to reaching their goals and then they're 
um, able to hire more people, do more things. Yeah. All these things work together. So MicroPython is an open source core that we base Circuit Python off of, and then we do upstream changes, and they do changes, and we do stuff. And then you get a really nice ecosystem that allows hardware support across lots of different boards. MicroPython is going to support this stuff. We're going to be able to support like all 400 plus boards that we want to support. Um, other people can make boards. So when we're um, doing upstream changes, what do, what's the what, what's the thing that we have to do to make it work? Each time for people are you know, we have just so that we've done to the core and you know it's a little bit like a, you know, i think last week you mentioned it was like a linux distro it, you have the same kernel but the distribution yeah. the what's enabled and the modules and like any changes like raspbian is based heavily on linux but they do make changes to the kernel and they make changes to the, the way they package things in the file system it's very similar the kernel of functionality is the same between micropython and circuit python like the parser and like, you know, whether we support async or, you know, F strings, that all comes from MicroPython. And then CircuitPython adds API changes on top of it. And sometimes there's a little bit more conflict and like the changes affect the same file. And so doing the merge where we pull in all the changes from, you know, MicroPython. And of course, we also send stuff upstream as well. We send bug fixes and changes and updates to them. Um, but getting it to, to sync up right, it's 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 non-trivial. People who've done um, merges, they know it's like it can be hundreds and hundreds of files that are edited, and it's like you have to make sure that you stick them together perfectly. So I think Scott's probably going to end up doing a video or something mm -hmm. about this, or maybe Dan. Well, so yeah, so Scott and Dan and Jeff are all worked on this merge, but it's compiling and it's, it's passing CI, so it's now on, on to test. And we're also going to update um, to ESP5, the IDF5. Okay. That's also coming up next. We want to do the merge first because we figured that was tough for everybody to do that. And then we're going to do um, ESP5 because it's going to come in with a lot of fixes and updates. And uh, we'll let us support more espresso chips, which is yeah. the eighth theme. All right. Well, if you want to keep up on all these and more, uh, we deliver this newsletter every single week. Go to adafruitdaily.com, separate site, because we don't want your customer information mixed in with newsletter stuff. So that's why we made another site. Well, for daily, we don't spam. We don't share the information. We hate spam and all of that just as much as you do, maybe even more.